Hello, everyone, and welcome to our special series that we are calling Moved to Orlando, where we talk to folks who have actually made the move to Central Florida and have them share their experiences with us. This week, I'm joined, as always, by a uh, real estate agent with Keller Williams at the Parks, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. And our guest this week is Ms. Barb Tarazi. How are you, Bar- Barb? Good. How are you? Good. I almost called you Bob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll answer to just about anything, right? Um, all right. So uh, let's start off. And Barb, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you found yourself down here in Central Florida? So I'm from the Northeast, born and raised in Philadelphia, got married, had kids, moved up to Bucks County, which is about 45 minutes north of Philadelphia. Um, hate the cold. Hate the cold. I brought my kids down to Orlando, loved Orlando, um, back in 88. Came down several times a year ever since. Anybody that's known me for more than five minutes knew that eventually, as soon as I had the opportunity, I would move down here. The opportunity presented itself about a year ago. People asked me, don't you think you're going to miss the cold? Aren't you going to miss the winter, change of seasons? The answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. I went through a summer. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually had to go home to visit family during the summer. It's just as hot up in the Northeast as it is down here. It can be, yeah. Just, it's just as humid. It's just as hot. The only difference is our summers are longer down here, but they're not hotter. We don't live in the middle of the desert. I mean, it's hot. Um, I love it. It it allows you to have a much healthier lifestyle. You can go out for a walk. We're quarantined, but we're still walking. I know my family that's still up in the Northeast, It's they're having wind chills of like, I don't know, 15 degrees. They're not going for a walk. They look out the window. Everything's gray. Everything's dead. There's no sun. It's, it's a miserable existence. I couldn't wait to get down here. Couldn't now, wait. How long ago did you uh, make the move? Um, a year. Exactly a year. Well, almost exactly a year. I started my new job April 1st of last year. And what kind of work do you do? Um, right now, I'm in a nonprofit, an amazing company, an amazing organization. We are um, a community-based building nonprofit, and it's it's fantastic. Oh, that's and awesome. And I am... Yeah, I am maybe two miles up the street from Disney Springs. So, yes, I do go. I am a Disney fanatic. We love Disney. My family loves Disney. We all love Disney. Um, I would argue that it's probably one of the reasons that I chose to live in such close proximity to to Disney Springs, maybe. And which, which neighborhood which neighborhood did you choose? I'm in Dr. Phillips. Oh, Okay. So, and I work right up the street. So it's amazing. I love it here. Sean, Sean you want to jump in with some questions? Um, yeah. I mean, what, uh, it, what exactly did you buy or are you renting? So right now my son actually bought a home and oh. I am squatting in his home until I figure out which neighborhood I'm going to end up in. Um, I am quarantined with two of my children mm-hmm. who are adult children don't think that that's any different than having toddlers. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> to be honest. My mom is in Tennessee during the quarantine, and she would be absolutely thrilled. Like, she calls, like, every it's day. Nice. She's, There's just nothing to do here. Like, because it's just not. She's like, I'd rather be there and all that. But she is going to be doing the same thing. She's about to move down, and my brother's going to buy a house, and she's going to live with him until she decides what she's going to do. So, that's good information to know that other people are doing that. Oh, yeah. I think it's challenging, especially when you're from the Northeast, to really find a neighborhood that you're comfortable with. It's very different down here. It's it's a whole different um, demographic. It's a whole different socioeconomic. You, you just you really don't know until you stay down here. Um, if my son wasn't here, I would probably find maybe an apartment to rent just so that I could go through the neighborhoods and really visit and see and just understand location because location is the key. Well, you know, it's funny you mention uh, the differences moving from the Northeast. Um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey uh, and I grew up uh, in a place where Every room in the house was its own room. 
Mm-hmm. Um, your kitchen was your kitchen. Your dining room was your dining room. Um, you know, and of course, especially from I think the '80s on, uh, houses built in Florida were you know predominantly built with that great room design. Where, and you know, and it is better. You know, the tile and that open architecture is better for air circulation, and it does get very hot down here. But when I bought a house, I was I wanted. I wanted my kitchen to be my kitchen, right? I didn't, you know, and um, I had to look for older construction. So the area that I'm in, which is just outside of downtown, <laughs> you know, was all built in the 60s okay. before they were doing the great room design. And yeah, you know, so because um, I didn't want like I had lived, I had rented houses that had the the great, you know, that great room um, and I hated it. It was like living in an. It was like living in a canyon. It is. Um, yeah. And I really wanted that. In, I wanted every room to have its own personality and its own intimacy. It's hard to find here. We must have looked at thirty houses before yeah. we found one. It is. It's very hard. So, talk to me about. Um, you know, one of the questions we're asking everybody is uh, the difference between your expectations before moving and the reality after. What was that like for you? So I think the problem, I don't want to say a problem, but the difference was I didn't really know if I had expectations, but there were definite differences that I wasn't prepared for. When you live in the Northeast, it's it, there's a lot of people in very close proximity. There's a lot of volume in everything you do. You go to the supermarket, which I think is the, the prime example. You go to the supermarket and everything's a rush. You have hundreds of people that are trying to get in and out of the supermarket. You know, the cashiers are are graded based on how fast they can get everybody in and out. You stand in line, there's 15 people in front of you. You have a second to get your stuff up on the conveyor belt. And when you do, you know, you gotta get in and out. And here, I went to the supermarket and the very first time I went, I had everything up on the conveyor belt. First of all, it's so much lower. And the cashier started to talk to me (laughs) and she was looking at my groceries and I'm thinking, why are you asking me about what's on the convey? Like, why do you care? And, you know, I'm standing there ready to check out. I have my phone ready. I'm going to use, you know, Apple pay and I'm in a rush and everybody's. And then there was a guy, it's Publix at the end and he's bagging my groceries And my Apple Pay didn't work on my phone, so I'm searching for my credit card. Next thing I know, he's walking out with my groceries, and I'm thinking, where's he going? (laughs) You know, like that doesn't happen in the Northeast unless they're stealing your groceries. Like nobody's helping you out to your car, you know, and and everything's so much slower. You get to a traffic light here, and you could take a nap in the Northeast. You don't have time to take your foot off the brake to put it on the gas. Somebody behind you honking. Right. You know, I don't know where they're going. I don't know why there's such a hurry here. I I remember the first traffic light. I was I remember thinking, is it stuck? Should I just go? I was looking at the other cars. Nobody else was moving. I mean, traffic down here. When and it's funny when I go to work, and people say, "Oh my God, the traffic." I'm thinking, there is no traffic. Even on I four. To me, it, so it's a much slower pace that I wasn't prepared for when I go to work. You know, people come in, they say good morning, they have a cup of coffee. Where I'm used to working in corporate America up in the city, Philadelphia, Manhattan. By the time you get to work, you're so cranky. <laughs> You've just bundled up like, you know, like you're some kind of Eskimo going out into the wilderness and, and you're jammed on a train, you can barely breathe, you get to work, you're miserable. It's just, it's like, it's like breathing air down here. That's all I can tell you. It's, it's so funny you brought up the Publix analogy. Uh, I swear, like three hours ago, I was thinking about when I first moved down here. And I was in a, I don't know why, but I don't need a reason. I was in a bad mood. <laughs> I was in Publix. And the cash, it was right after I moved down here, maybe like a month. And I'm in Publix and I had like a mil, we had a million things to do. We was, you know, we were in temporary housing with Disney because John had gotten a job with Disney and we were, you know, you know, I was trying to find places to live and stuff like that. And the cashier is chatting with me and she's asking me 
about the different things I'm buying. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm a, I'm a week out, I'm a month out of Jersey. And I looked at it, I said, are you writing a book? <laughs> <laughs> and she just looked at me. I said, I just need to get out of here. Okay, I don't want to have a discussion about this. Um, and, you know, the, uh, I also, you know, the toll booths, right? Uh-huh. When you go through a toll here, and mm-hmm. if you're doing cash... And you're dealing with a toll taker. I don't even think we have toll takers anymore now here. Yeah. But, you know, we're in Jersey. They throw the change back at you. You know, these people are smiling and you have a, you have a nice day. Yeah, I. it's different and I love it. I love it. Um, you can feel it that you've decompressed, that you've accept this new way of life when you go back to the north. That's all I right. can say. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone is miserable. Everyone is, I, I can't even describe it. They're just unhappy. They're unhealthy. It's, and you don't realize it because you're living it and you're embedded in it until you break free. But I can tell you that between October and probably May, there's no sunshine. There really isn't. On those few days that you have sunshine, it like burns your retina like lava. <laughs> it's, it's miserable. And so... Down here, you just feel like you want to get out. You feel like it's beautiful. It's sunny. And, yes, I love Disney. So that's the extra perk. Sean? Oh, yeah. No, I was, I was just going to say I remember because I've predominantly lived in the South uh, my whole life. And I did drive up to New York City once. And I hit Delaware. And I, like, got to a thing where it was, like, welcome to Delaware. And then, like, a mile maybe after I hit a toll booth. And I had never seen a toll booth before. Like I'd never been to a toll booth. And so I pulled up and the woman in there was so hateful when I pulled up (laughs) because I'm used to living in the South and anywhere I go, I can just start talking to whoever's around me and then we become friends. And like, that's just how it is. And my whole time that I was up in the Northeast, like when I would go up and approach people and start talking to them, like if we're just sitting around waiting, they would just act like I was like, why are you talking to me? Like, I don't really, you're talking to me. And I'm like, well, then I'll get to know you. And then, and they just, they were not about it at all. So I completely get, it's drastically different. Yeah, it's very different. Now, now Barb, how has your Disney experience changed now that you live here? Versus when you're vacationing. So, so I go quite frequently. That's that's not embarrassing. Okay. So maybe define, I go every, define frequently. Define um, frequently. At least Friday and Saturday nights, and maybe once or twice during the week. And okay. um, I do go several times a week down to Disney Springs just to walk around, and I do have lunch there. But what I can tell you is, now that I live here, I appreciate the parks much more. I appreciate all of the detail that goes into Epcot. I love Epcot. Um, mm-hmm. It's just probably my favorite park. Just sometimes you just need to go for a walk. And when you do and you live here, you see how beautiful the flowers are, how intricate all of the countries and all of the detail. I don't know that I paid attention to all the pavilions as, as much as I do now. Um, and it's just a better experience for those that feel that Disney is not for adults. I argue that it's probably more for adults in some instances than children. I have bought, I can't tell you since I've been here, so many of my friends have come down and we've walked through Disney and, you know, we adult Disney, if you will. And I take them to the nice restaurants, usually the ones that you guys recommend. And, you know, we just have a great time. And as an adult, I think you can have a great time down here. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I agree. Uh, um, I actually, I mean, I know Craig and the guys, I think even Sean, they're in the parks a lot more than I am. Um, you know, it did change for me, but you, I was a commando planner, yeah. right? I came down, I mean, there were spreadsheets. There were, I mean, it was a mil- it was with military precision, Mm-hmm. on my vacations. Were you that type of uh, Disney person or were you a little bit more relaxed when you were on vacation? No, I still am. Maybe if like if when my kids came down and, and my grandson was here, we had a schedule and we had a lot we wanted to do and we got it done. And the problem is, I don't want to say it's a problem, but when you have large group and we usually, when I have guests, we usually have a large group. It's almost impossible not to pre-plan if you want to have, you know, sit down meals or, 
<coughs> you know, we you can make it work. I mean, we made it work. I, I know when I first like had moved down here and actually got to to living here and got my annual pass and everything. Um, me and a couple of my friends would literally just go to Epcot around 11 o'clock when they opened World Showcase because it's about a mile around the whole World Showcase. And we would literally just walk World Showcase as an exercise thing. We weren't even there to ride rides. We weren't there to do anything. It was just we were people had been, you know, I've been walking through neighborhoods and like on, there's not a lot of sidewalk and stuff like that. That's another big thing, I guess, for people when they move here is like. There's not a lot of walking here in general because there is nowhere to walk. The sidewalk just ends, whereas, especially in the Northeast, when I go places, I'm like, oh, you can pretty much walk around the city at least or like get yeah. places a little easier. But um, one day we were just like, why don't we just start walking at Epcot? Like we have, we all have annual passes. We all like the parks and stuff and we'll just go and get a little exercise and just walk around. So it, it's very casual. I guess it's very leisurely. Yeah. So, so Barb, let me, uh, let me ask you this. Um, what is one thing you would want to tell anybody planning this move? What, what do you think they should, what are the thing, the thing or the things you think they should keep in mind? Don't agonize. Just do it. I packed my house. I moved my stuff. Um, Literally, I had a huge moving van out front of my house. I didn't even have my house up for sale. One of my neighbors saw my moving van. They came down, they knocked on my door, and they bought my house. Wow. Um, yeah, it was crazy. If you agonize, you're never going to do it. Rip the Band-Aid off. If you're thinking about it, just do it. You will never regret it. You will never regret it. Well, so how long was it from the time you, like, first thought about making this move to the time you actually did it? Um, so I had, it was miserable. It was freezing cold in December. I took the train. The train was late. I stood out on the train um, platform. My feet were numb. It took me two hours to get to work. My son had already transferred down here. Um, I went home. I told my other kids, I said, I'm done. I, I can't do this anymore. I applied for jobs on a Friday. I got hired on a Tuesday. Um, I told them I needed some time. I had to sell my house. They said no problem, and I started on April first. So it wasn't long. It wasn't wow. long. It sounds you know, like I lucky. Yeah. I was blessed. I was really lucky. Since, since you have lived here a year now, what neighborhood now would you be interested in? I don't know. I don't know if you've got to go around and look a lot yet, but um, I love the Dr. Phillips area. I the pro here's the problem that I have to be brutally honest. I love a lot of different neighborhoods and now I'm struggling to really focus. I love winter garden. Mm -hmm. Um, I love Dr. Phillips winter park is beautiful, but I think it's too far for where I want to be. I do want to stay. Sorry, but I do want to stay in the Disney area. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also work here. So, and I'm probably going to work here hopefully until I retire. So I think I, it, my favorite areas right now would be um, Dr. Phillips and Winter Garden. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I've, I've said it before. If I have to buy a house again, it's probably Winter Garden. Yeah, um, it's beautiful. I fell in love with it. I fell absolutely in love with it. But all right. Well, Barb, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. For taking time to, to talk to us. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, if you are interested in making the move to Central Florida, please check out our website, movingtoorlando.com. Of course, you can also reach out to Sean, who's a licensed real estate agent, Sean at move, S-E-A-N, at movingtoorlando.com, and he can help you with all of that as well. Uh, but again, thanks, folks, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next time.